Welcome everyone to our uh, Monday night shiur. Our shiur is la'atzlachat Amnon Abramov and mishpachto. Hashem yivach them bebracha va'atzlachah parnasah tova. You should get a lot. Tonight we start off with an Ariya Kadosh. The topic of our of our shiur tonight is preparing for Pesach. Now usually I like to speak something about current events or parasha, and really. Parashat Kitisa, the Egel Azahav, we didn't really get a chance to talk about it. Last week I was unable to come. And there's so much to talk about the Egel Azahav and how it's connected to Mashiach Tzitkenu and the Gigula Atida. However, Avar Zmano Batel Korbano, and we got to prepare for Pesach. Two times a year, most of the mitzvot of the Jewish people are in effect. One is the month of Tishrei. Which is Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. And one is the month of Nisan. Berkata, it starts with Berkata Ilanot. Then Pesach. Then Sefirat Omer, Leading up to Shavuot. It's like one huge holiday. In fact, the Ramban, Nachman Ali says, the Chol HaMoed is really one whole... Um, uh, Sefirat Omer is one big Chol HaMoed. It's really all a holiday. It's all, it's, we're always, the Jewish people are always in a holiday. Baruch Hashem. We were We don't work. We don't work. We don't work. We're not... So the Ari says something important. He says, Hanizhar, one who is careful, Mimashu Chametz Bapesach, from even a drop, even a morsel, a tinsy bit, a. a, a, a you know what Mashu is? That's a Mashu. A Mashu. Bapesach of Chametz, careful not to eat even. To stab Hana'a, to eat anything, anything, mashu, chametz abesach. Look at the words of the Ari. Muftachlo. What's muftachlo? It's promised to him. Shelo yechta kol ashana. He will not get into a situation of an avera the whole year. I don't know if you just so understood what, that's that's what I just said. Two times that I remember the Ari promised, Ari Akadosh promised something. Two times. Number one, whoever stays awake the whole night of Shavuot doesn't die that whole year. Whoever learns Torah stays awake the whole night of Shavuot will not die the whole year. That's in Shara Kavanot, Mephorash. In the book of Shara Kavanot of the Ari Kadosh. The second thing, now when I say stay up a whole night of Shavuot, it doesn't mean mm-hmm. talking with your friends, uh, having a drink, having a, something else. I don't want to say chach chach, lach lach, garinim, semichki. Yeah, no, that's not. Better if you go to sleep. When he says staying up all night, it means staying up, learning Torah. First the Chumash, then the Nevi'im, then the Kituvim, then the Mitzvot, then the Idra Rabba, then the Idra Zuta, then the Midrashim, then the Yeratzon in the early in the morning. Really, tell you the truth, I was ans- once asking my friend, it was right after Purim. You know, Purim over here is an interesting time in this shul. It's a very interesting time, I don't know if you saw the videos, our shul. Just put up, just put up some videos, maybe you see it. So... So I told uh, my friend, he says, you know, Purim, everybody has a holiday that he's mo- very connected to. He's very connected to. The Purim is connected to a certain person that I know. He's a very jolly person. He's happy. Kaifavads, kaifush, drink, nalivai, be happy. Very easygoing. Very, let's go. So I said to the guy, you know what I feel I'm very connected to? Shavuot. I said, Why? I said, do you know there isn't one siman in the Shulchan Aruch that says the halachot of Shavuot? There isn't a halacha in the Shulchan Aruch that talks about Shavuot. There's nothing to do. It's, it's a regular Yom Tov. Mm-hmm. When did the whole thing start of staying up all night? When did it start? When did it really get into effect? 400 years ago. 450 years ago. Once the Bet Yosef was learning a Zohar. Zohar HaKadosh. The Shulchan Aruch. Bala Shulchan Aruch was learning a Zohar. He was not even in Israel at that time. He was in Turkey. He was in the middle of learning Torah, and suddenly, out of his throat, they hear a different voice. Possessed. And the voice starts to say, I am the Mishnayot that you guys are learning tonight. Interesting. He's learning, they were learning Mishnayot. Mishnah, 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 Mishnah. Repeat, oh, boom! I am the Mishnah that you guys are learning tonight. And I just want to let you guys know, if you guys were 10 together tonight, you guys would have brought the Geula. 
Oh, they were just learning. They were learning. Yeah, they were learning. Because they learned the Zohar. The Zohar says, Blessed are the people who stay up all night the night of Shavuot. But nobody used to do it. It wasn't for sure not in Ashkenaz. For sure not over there. In Sfarad, there were groups of people who learned the Zohar Kador. She used to do it. And suddenly they hear out of the Beit Yosef's mouth, a voice come out of, I am the Mishnah. Uh, thank you. You guys are picking me up. You guys are giving me Kishutim. You guys are giving me ornaments. God, may Hashem bless you. But you, if you guys were 10, you could have brought the Geula. That's what the voice out of Rabbi Yosef Karo's. Who brings it? The Shla Kadosh. The Shla Kadosh. The great of Horovitz. One of the great. He's buried right next to the Rambam. To go to the Rambam in Tveria. Up the steps is the Rambam. Down the steps over there is the Shla. He's the one who wrote a special prayer for the children. They should have good children to be read every Erev Rosh Chodesh Sivan. You can, be, you can really read it anytime you want. Here is Et Ratzon to read it, Erev Rosh Chodesh Sivan. So he brings on the story. The next day they were outside of Israel. How many of Shavuot they do over there? Two. So all the friends come that were there. Like, guys, you guys missed out. We got to stay up all night again. But already this time, when the voice came back, says that once you guys weren't together the first time, they already avars mano. I think this story spread like wildfire and it became a very big thing. The Ariya Kadosh took it to a next level. The Ariya Kadosh writes in Shara Kavanot, whoever stays up all night on Shavuot, Muftachlo, it's promised him, Shelo Yamut, Velo Yinazek, Kolashana. He will not die and he will not get hurt the whole year. Whoever, he promises. Now, this isn't some uh, Midrash. This, the Ariya Kadosh brings this on in Shara Kavanot. Muftachlo. Unless, obviously, it's time for that person's time to go. If it's already his time, his time is up. He did his tikkun already, it's time to go. What does it mean it's promised him he will not die? What does that mean it's promised? That means he will not die early, before his time, chas v'shalom. You know, there are some people, they cause themselves death. Chas I don't want to bring up stuff over here, but let's say a person lives a very unhealthy life. Very unhealthy life. And he already goes to the doctor. The doctor tells him, listen, your heart, artery, or, uh, your heart arteries are clocked 50%. You got to stop. No, I'm good. He's going to say, I'm going to stay up all night of Shavuot. Every single night. Like, now you're being a chamor. You're being a petar chamor. What are you, the doctor is telling you, your arteries are clocked 50%. And you say, I'm going to stay up. No, that's exactly what Ari is saying. Anything that you know, sometimes a person could be uh, liable for his own life. You could be liable for your life. You can't say, I'm going to put my eyes, uh, 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 headband over my eyes, I'm going to cross to the Queen's Boulevard. It's not for nothing, it's called the Boulevard of Death. You understand? An ocean parkway today, yeah, here you can't even drive more than 20 miles per hour. Every other, th- every other thing is lights, lights, lights. They take pictures, they can't figure it. $115, $125. Nobody, there's no, no, not even one death recorded there in a long time, Baruch Hashem. Why? They put over there the cameras. Soon it's going to be everywhere, these things. Now they come up with a new thing. They have cameras right now in UK, soon to be in America. If you litter on the floor, you litter. They catch you, and they send you a ticket to, to the house. In UK, they're already starting also, to do this. Is that with dogs? They do with dogs. There's not the shit. Anyways, so the Ariya, the Ariya Kadosh, when he says Muftachlo, it means that you don't put yourself in a Sakana. Sakana. That's obvious. Don't be a... Now, what does it mean? He Dari says, If you're Zahir Bechametz, it's promised to you that you're not going to sin the whole year. If you're promised not to eat Hametz and Pesach, it means like this. It's very Pashut. A lot of times in our life, it's not our fault. And we're put into situations that we don't know that the, the person that's giving us food wasn't careful in the Hashgacha. I was once in a Bar Mitzvah by mitzvah in Williamsburg. And you know, Williamsburg, this is like the Mea Sha'arim of America. It's the, you know, black and white. Yeah. Borough Park is colorful. But uh, Williamsburg is black and white. There are people that don't know English. They don't know English. Okay? It's like you're going to a new world over there. You're stepping in, you're in a new world. I love it. Anyways, you go to. The, so I was over there in a uh, bar mitzvah. I used to go to a Sephardic rabbi over there. I used to teach us Atzrat Hayim, Etz Hayim. And uh, they served wine on the tables. Wine. In cups. No, wines, bottles of wines. And you know the, uh, the Jew, his, his nishama is always very curious. Beru, they say in Hayim. So in Betumi, 
I took the bottle of wine to see the Ashgacha. Now, what came into my mind to see the Ashgacha? I have no idea. I'm in this ultra religious, super religious bar mitzvah. What came to mind? Why would I have to see the Ashgacha? I see where the yain is not mevushal. And who's opening up all the bottles of the wine? All the Spanish uh, waiters over there pouring cups of wine for everybody. That's what the Ari means. Muftah lo. It's promised to him that he won't sin, that it, it won't come to him a situation where against your will, be honest, by accident, you'll fall into an area. Like cases that happened by tzaddikim, they served in front of them milk. Warm milk with a little bit of salt. Suddenly, boom, the, the, the whole cup fell. They served him another, boom, it fell again. Something is wrong here. It doesn't, soups don't fall twice. Where did you get this milk? Chalav Yisrael or Chalav Yishmael? <laughs> what kind of Chalav it is? And then they find out it's Chalav from a camel. One famous story was with the Khatam Sofer. Khatam Sofer. The Khatam Sofer, you guys know, Khatam Sofer, <laughs> he, was, he said about himself, the keys of Halakha are in my hands in this generation. He was a Hungarian Rav. He was a student of Rav Nathan Adler. Rav Nathan Adler, Adler in German, I think, means the eagle. Eagle. House of the eagle. A Khatam Sofer had his first son, I think he was 54. 54 years old. First child, he was 54 years old. His first wife, he wouldn't divorce her. She didn't give him any kids. She passed away. He got remarried with Rabbi Akiva Eager's daughter that was a widow. Now, Rabbi Akiva Eager was the, was the Gadol Hador of his generation. He was the Rebbe of Posen. He was Gadol Hador. You know what Rabbi Akiva Eager is? <laughs> you learn Halakha, you don't move without Rabbi Akiva Eager. And his daughter was a widow. He was, she was the Khatam Sofer's second wife, second marriage. She gave him a son. He think he was like 54, 55 years old. He became known as the Khatam Sofer. The Khatam Sofer. Well, big Dol Hador too. The Khatam Sofer... At the end of his life, he suffered from, uh, he couldn't use the bathroom. He needed to use a catheter. Oh, yeah. Catheter. Back then, I'm talking 70, uh, 18th century. You know what it is to use a catheter? Lo uh, aleinu. For Gdol Hador also. <clears throat> What's he doing using a... Why Hashem do this then? So they asked him this question once. And he was very close to his students. He wasn't like one of those Rosh Hashivas that, you know... There were some Rebbe's that, that was their shita. I'm closing my room. And that's it. Ben Ishchai was like that, by the way. Ben Ishchai, he wasn't easy to, uh, to approach. He was locked into his, in his four amot. He used to learn Etzah Hayim all day. I don't want to get into it right now. Uh, Khatam Sofer was not like that. He was very with his students. He was very into his students' lives. So the Khatam Sofer, they asked him, Rebbe, how did you, what, what, what was the punishment in Shammai? So he said something that was very scary. This is really a drasha for Shavavim. He says, he said to them, because I didn't speak enough to my Talmidim about the Isur of Chas Shalom. I don't want to say the Isur that men do. Because I didn't speak about that enough. Midah keneged midah from Shamaim. I was punished with, I uh, have to use the, from that place, a uh, uh, catheter. So you look at the digduk benikuda sa'ara, the tzadikim. The Khatam Sofis is about himself. So the Khatam Sofis Rebbe was Rav Natan Adler. I'm not an Adler. I'm not an Adler. He was an Ashkenazi who did everything like a Sfaradi. That was the Khatam Sofer's Rebbe. That was his Rebbe. The Khatam Sofer. I'm not an Adler. Everything they used to do like the Ariya Kadosh. Everything like the Ariya Kadosh. Ariya Kadosh. Ariya Kadosh. Even back then already they used to follow even Ashkenazim. They used to follow the Ariya Kadosh. So, at one time the Khatam Sofer <laughs> sent his students, students, to the Secretary of Education of Hungary. Secretary, my brother-in-law is from Hungary. S Secretary, Secretary of Education, yeah, the, the oh. Mintz family. The uh, I'm looking at the other one. <laughs> he sure. said, they're from, no, the, he's the, not the, my wife, no, <laughs> yeah, not like, that one. <laughs> he's a Bukharian from the court. So his, they sent to the Secretary of Education, why they made a rule all Jewish children have to come to school on Shabbat, have to learn secular education, 
closed down. You gotta go to the public school. It was time of Haskalah. You know what Haskalah is? One of the worst times of the Jewish people. Till today, technically, it is Haskalah is the Enlightenment. John Locke, Montesquieu, Montesquieu, all the Marin Bishin, all the Shedim from the Gehenom. So this, they went to the chief of the Secretary of Education. He was a nice guy. You could relate, dressed to impress, as they say. Back then, everyone is clean shave, not just clean shave, razor, not even one, not even one hair, gazantite. So they go to him, and all the chachamim come to him. Students of the Khatam Sofer, barada. Everything is a uh, ruffle. Like they just came out of the <laughs> the cave, cave man. They just came out. Nachasushalom, not cave man, but they they came out. You know how it is. Who has time for being well groomed? They go to the Secretary of Education, and he says to them. Uh, distinguished guests my distinguished guests serve them some English tea you guys know what English tea is? Yeah. Ariel you know what English tea is? Yeah. what's English tea? Yeah, but milk. what's with milk? tea with milk Indian style English, English tea yeah. the Indians got it from then they were colonized Lolin. <laughs> English tea now what's the problem with that? what's the problem Ariel? Halav Yisrael you think they held of OUD back then? There's no OUD. No sakhanat nefashot. Now these guys, they need a secretary of education to be on his good side. If they're on his bad side, has shalom, it's a siman klaya to all the yaldei Israel. But in, in this time when they really needed him, they decided to be boteach ba'ashem, chesed, yesodavinu. They told the secretary of education, I'm sorry, we can't drink your English tea. We're lactose intolerant. What? One Jew is lactose intolerant. Four Jews never agree on one thing. Something is fishy over here. All four of you are lactose intolerant? It cannot be. Ah, bivu. Halav Israel. Halav Israel, you Jews, you think you know everything? I only raise uh, cows in my barn. You see, you Jews think you know all the halachot. So they said, we're sorry, Adoni, Rosh HaMemshala, Sara Chinuch, we can't take the milk, it's halakha. He got so angry, said, bring the maiden here, we'll ask her. Now he doesn't know the halakha, she's not an Eman. He brings in the maid. He says, Dirk, tell me the truth. Anger, you know. Ashkenazi. He says, what did you put inside this? What kind of milk? She saw his face, she got herself afraid. He started to stammer. What happened? Answer, woman. She said to him, I got afraid this morning because you told me to be very careful to serve the, the guests English tea. the English tea. And I knocked the jug of the milk. So I ran across to the next farm and I milked some camel. Not camel, horse milk. Horse milk. And I wouldn't have done it if, I, if, if the other maid, my friend, wouldn't have told me that it's tastier oh, than the cow milk. So there's nothing to be worried for. English tea is served. <laughs> when the secretary of education heard that, ask somebody from Kazakhstan. When, the, when he, when he, huh? You had it or something? <laughs> Excuse me. When the secretary of education heard that, he said, Torah emet, Moshe emet. No, he was a guy. Yeah. But he said, "Look at look how Hakadosh Baruch Hu wrote the Torah. Right here and there, he took the the decree against the Yaldei Israel and he ripped it apart in front of him. Wow. So you never lose out by keeping mitzvot. Sometimes you don't know right now what you're getting. That's what the Ari means. Muftachlo Abraham." Shelo Yihta Kolashana. Yihta Kolo Shelo Yihta Kolashana. Why? Another story. There was one guy. This story was said over by Rav Zilberstein, Abraham. Rav Zilberstein is one of the Rav Chaim Kanevsky's son in law. 
Rav Dov Cook's father-in-law. Wow. More than that, you want? Rav Zilberstein said, story. It's brought down in his book, Niflaot Maasecha. Niflaim Maasecha. Brings their story. One time, during time of the Haskalah, one son, Ben Sorer Umorer. Against his parents, against Hashem, really evil boy. This boy got very sick. Coronavirus. Got very sick. His father comes to him and says, Bajim, listen to Papa. Your aunt, look at you. Say, Shema Yisrael. Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Here's Papa. I learned in university this, that. Aram, how am I going to say Hashem? How? So he told Father, I'll make you a deal. If Hashem saves me from this holy, let's have a debate. Real university style. Let's have a debate, but not like today debate, where they screw you from the back. Back then, debate it was a meant, debate. Meant something. It was meant something. Today, there's no debate. Today, there's all levi uh, as they say. His father says, "You know what? Let's go. I daven for you." He daven for him. In Russian, they say chestnut mm-hmm. gavarat. <laughs> he says, "Be'emet." He got up from his midal cholio. They had a debate, but a true debate. A debate that meant something, Abraham. The son got up. And the father was able to prove to him, Torah emet, Moshe emet. The son became so chazak emet v'yaziv. But, as you know, back then, World War I, big wars there were. He was nitgayes la tzava. He was driven into the war. He became katzin. When the Jews go to something, they go to the top. Katsin means admiral. They were going to the war. Back then, you know what war was. It wasn't war. It was disease, hunger, famine, typhus, cholera. You would, people would die more from the diseases than they would from the war. You know how many people died after the, the Holocaust from the food that they ate afterwards? How much they, they, they blow? They got they couldn't they couldn't handle. They got they bloated and boiling. So, this boy he became the admiral, and it was right before a uh, chazit. Uh, they went to the war. The big general comes today. Joe Biden, our illustrious presidentas. Today he made two female four-star generals. He's standing up over there. This tzaddik, and he says. We are standing in the the, 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 the thingamajing. He's in the Pentagon. In the sh- thingamajing. He doesn't know he's in the Pentagon. And the guy, he's Secretary of Defense. He forgets his name. Do you know the, 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 the general? Uh, he, uh... Damn it, this is... Today, today! He runs the thingamajing. The, the what it is called? The guy forgot the sec- his Secretary of Defense's name and the Pentagon. Tell me, isn't the world laughing at America right now? I'm laughing at it. I'm in America. Okay? Anyway, that's why it's the party of the Hamor. We gotta do Pidyon Petar Hamor. If we don't do Pidyon Petar Hamor, we're not gonna get rid of the Hamor. <laughs> Anywho, so this guy goes to the war, and the general, shh, and the general comes, and he says he's about to give his big speech, but the general's running late, and you know. How we, how the Jewish people, Mincha, 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 time for Mincha. Now he's the admiral, but he's, he's Doti Chazak. Enzman, he became religious, he promised his dad, he's in it. He says, you know, until the general is going to come, this, that, I'm going to go down to Mincha. True story, I was a little bit saying the story, you heard it from the Bala Maise. He goes to the side, he's admiral. 
He starts to dive in Mincha. I know he's about to 10% come back alive from this thing. He starts to dive in. Bekavone. Come on, I. He's about to I keep stars. You, before you go to war, you're gonna daven with Kavana. You want to daven with Kavana? Go to war. How was that? He's davening with Kavana. I'm on ice. If I suddenly the general comes. Where is the admiral? He's over there shakaling He gets upset. Take him to the prison of the army. The Emza Shmonaisre. They take him. Run him up. Meanwhile, everyone else. Goes to the uh, war, to the war. He gets sent to the to the military, military prison. prison. He gets put on trial. They ask him, "What's your name?" Uh, he knows he's going to die. He says, "What's your name?" David. Where you come from? What's your mother's name? They said, "This guy, my nishgash." Send to the mental hospital. Like this, he was in the mental hospital three, four weeks. War ended. He was sent home alive. Muftahlo! That's what it means, Muftahlo. I always say. When the Aryan Shavuot, it must be stood away. That's what it means, Rabotai. So, when the Aryan Kadosh says something, Aryeki Yishag, when the lion roars, Milo Yira. Who's not afraid? Will the lion roar at night? Not the Lion King, the remix. Not this. I'm talking about the Ari HaKadosh. It says over there, Kitov. But however, the, the Mishlei says, Kitov HaKelev Chai. Better is a live dog. Min Ari Amet, from the dead lion. What's good if the, the, the Ariya Gadosh is standing in the corner over there, nobody uses him, nobody learns him? Better to be a Kelev Chai, better to be a live dog. Better to be the live dog. So this is how we start our shiur, and I know this was a hefty introduction. But when I say you have to be careful with Mashu Hametz Pesach, not only in eating Mashu Hametz Pesach. You see, our grandparents... When they used to make food, did they have something called potassium iodate inside their food? No. Did they have something, I don't know, what else was inside no, their nothing. food? All those chemicals, everything was whole foods. Yeah. Chametz for them to keep. Matok midvash, everything was easy. Yakte pomidor, yakte bodorin, egg, soup, eggs. Even their rice was no issue. Today everything is enriched, 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 enriched. What? what what the heck they put in there, we don't know. Exactly. So therefore, back then it was easy keeping hametz by Pesach. Not to, keep, not to eat hametz. Now, what's the difference between hametz and matzah? Let's look at it. Hametz. There's a mem in hametz. There's a mem in matzah. Yes. There's a tzaddik in hametz. Hametz. There's a tzaddik in matzah. Yes. What's the difference? Chet. And a hay. How do you make a chet? It's like a doorway, right? How do you make a hay? It's a doorway, but it's a little bit open. A little bit open. What's the difference? One slash of a pen. What's the difference between a chet and a hay? Just a little line. A little line, that's it. That's how easy it is to be nichshal b'chametz of Pesach. That's how easy it is to be nichshal b'chametz of Pesach. And what? How do you... Now look at the chametz. Look at the beauty. What's Hametz? What's Hametz, Rabbi Yisai? Hametz, again, what's the letters? Chet, Mem, Tzadik. In life, we have four beings. Domem, what's Domem? Inanimate objects. Tzomeach, Tzadik. Tzomeach is plants, life. Plantation, that's Tzadik. Hametz, Hametz is a Tzadik? Yes, that's Tzomeach. Next is what? Me'achai. What's chai? Live things, animals. Chet. Chamet. What's the first letter of chamet? Chet. Chai. And what's the last thing? Medaber. What's medaber? Mem. Mem. Chet. Tzadik. Chamet. What's the only thing that doesn't have chamet? The first thing. Domem. Inanimate. 
You want to be careful of chametz on Pesach? Be an animate. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. Silence. Lo matzati laguf tov ela shitika. Now, what's domem? How do you spell domem? What's the first letter of domem? Dalit. What's the second letter? Domem. Mem. Mem and mem. Dalit. Mem. Mem. What's the first? Dalit is four. Mem is how much? 40. 40 and 4. What's the last mem? Another 40. 40 plus 44 is how much? 84. Does that number sound familiar? Tikkun Habri. How old was Yaakov Avinu when he got married? 84. How many times do you have to fast for that Avera? 84. Pesach comes right after. We do the Tikkun of the 84. Once we finish with the 84, we finish the Domem. Now we can take care of the rest, the Chametz. We took out the Yetzara of the Domem. Now we have to deal with the Chametz. And what's chametz? What does it mean chametz and matzah? Just a little stroke of the pen. A little stroke of the pen. Chet and hey, What's the difference? Nothing almost. And what's the chet of chametz? That's the doorway. What did Hashem pass over? The mashkov. The of the doorway. You got to put the dam. And how do you, what did we put on the doorway? Dam. How do you, dam? Domem. That's the domem. Hashem took care of the domem for us. Now we have left the chai, tzomeach, and the midaber. We gotta take all that out of the from the chametz, the yetzahara. And now I'm gonna tell you another big secret. If a person thinks about it, before Mitzrayim, there was one thing that wasn't in kinetic energy. It wasn't in action in this world. It, it wasn't turned on. Let's say. Teshuva. <laughs> teshuva. Wait. Hold Think on. about it. Adam did teshuva. Yeah. Wasn't accepted. Reuben de Tshuva wasn't accepted. Am Yisrael, 210 years crying to Hashem, wasn't accepted. Esav wasn't accepted. He cried to his father Isaac, don't you have one more bracha for me? No, he's done. What about Cain? Cain, Tshuva he did, wasn't accepted. He, said, he, he was the one who said the first words. Gadol avonim ineso. Hen garashto oti mal pne adama. Umi panecha esatev. Vaiti nad venad benad. Vaiti nad venad baaretz. Hagar. Hagar. It was accepted. But it, Hagar was it? Yishmael you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Interesting point. <laughs> Interesting point. We got to think about that. But everyone else, the right. Jews at least, weren't accepted. Why wasn't it accepted? Before Passover, we didn't have one thing that also starts with... Teshuvah starts with the letter Tough. And we didn't have something that only Passover allowed it... To happen, what is that? Matan Torah. Without Torah, there is no Teshuvah. That's why we look at the Haggadah of Pesach. And what is it saying the Haggadah of Pesach? Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Yoshua. And Rabbi, who's the third one? Abraham. Who's the third one? Close, close. You're in the right ballpark. Eliezer Akiva, no? The, the child knows. Rabbi Tarfon, Hayu misubim b'bnei brak. They were sitting in b'nei brak, and all night, what were they doing? They were. They were just speaking about the miracles of Passover. On Pesach, you have a special mitzvah that you don't have any other time of the year. It's called to be a storyteller. V'shinantam levanet v'higadeta lebincha. You have a mitzvah on Pesach night to put your son in front of you, sit over here. You say, Bachim, you know, Avadim Hayinu Leparo. See, the problem is you sit down on the Pesach night. That's why our Rosh Hashanah, our Teshuvah, if our Pesach doesn't, is not done well, our Rosh Hashanah is not done well. Because the Teshuvah and Rosh Hashanah depends on the Torah of Pesach. Because without the Torah of Pesach, we would never have the Teshuvah. So you have to sit your kid. You don't have to say like, you know, Yalla nu, have a day when I'm time. Dayenu, Pesach, Marta, Omar, bring out the, um, the, the, the gebraks, Give, uh, bring out the soup, bring out the bach, I don't know. Bring it out. No, this is not Pesach. Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Tarfon and Rabbi Yeshua, you miss Subin. They weren't just saying the story of Passover. They were reclining while they were saying it. We're saying the story right now. It's nothing less than eating matzah and drinking the four cups of wine. They were saying the story to whom? Three big rabbis, mekubalim kedoshim. They're saying the story. They were saying the story. So look at the high that they were in. 
They didn't realize it came the time to say Shema of Shaharit. It's like 8 in the morning, I know. Could you believe such a thing? What level they got? How? Avra uh, Gabriel, by saying a story of coming out of Egypt? And not only that, the Rasha, the Rasha who says, Ah, ma'avoda azot lachem, bring out the food. What do we say to this guy? Ilu hayasham? If he was there, lo ayanigal. He wouldn't have come out. Why wouldn't he have come out? Because the whole point of coming out of Mitzrayim is to get a Torah. And the whole point of getting the Torah is to put into action Teshuvah. Without Teshuvah, we don't have life. There's no, there's no life. You would do an Avera right away. Shach from Shamayim, hand would fall off. Would, person would steal, hand would fall. Person would be Chilul Shabbat, his car would blow up, boom, boom, boom. Person would uh, eat Hametz on Pesach, suddenly his throat, he would get choked. Ah, so Hashem says the world cannot keep on going like this, or else I would only have a minyan. So we put something called Teshuvah. But Teshuvah only works if I have Torah, and a Torah is only possible because of Yitziat Mitzrayim. So if I don't sit down on the night of Pesach and I say the story of Yitziat Mitzrayim, then I don't get Torah. If I don't get Torah, I don't have Teshuvah. And therefore, if I was there, I wouldn't have come out. And that's just a preparation of what Lel HaSeder could do for us. And I want to tell you guys one thing. Something unbelievable. What you do on the night of Pesach, what you have the power to do, is higher than Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah, Purim, Kippurim, everything. Why? Go after the main thing. Go after the beginning. Go after the begin. What was the beginning point of Kali Israel? And what is Kla- what is Pesach? Pesach we came out without a zechut. We didn't have zechut. What does Ezekiel say? Va'omar lach b'damai chayi. Va'omar lach b'damai chayi. And I told you in your blood you will live. And I told you in your blood you will live. What blood? The blood of Korban Pesach and the blood of Brit Milah. That means Hashem found for us, He opened us a Petach. What Petach? Something we didn't have. And something even crazier I'm going to tell you right now. Do you know what Korban Pesach is? You see everyone before Pes- Passover, every single human being, Cain, Shem, Noah, Adam, Arishon, when they would bring a Korban, what kind of Korban they would bring? Korban Ola. What's a Korban Ola? Everything is for Hashem. Korban Pesach was a huge... It was, it was a shock in the world. There is a sacrifice. Not only do you partake, you have to finish it yourself. Nothing goes to God. You know why? You become the Mizbeach. God is saying, you are the Kadosh now. It's no more Miz- uh, Korban is for me. I'm telling the world. News... New Twitter, somebody just sold the, the first Twitter, 2.5 million bucks. Tweet. Twitter! Insta- um, guys, I have walking holy people in the world. They're the new Mizbeachs. I'm not looking for a Korban Ola anymore. They're my Korban. They're my partners. And that's why right after the golden calf, what does Hashem tell us? Don't eat meat and milk. Don't forget what makes you holy. You, in your essence as a Jew, is holy. You are the Korban Pesach. That realization alone was enough for Hashem to say, <laughs> You should live in your blood. <laughs> Why live in your blood? Your blood is holy. You are holy. What makes you holy? I make you holy. Because you came out of Mitzrayim. Amen. Baruch Adonai Amen. 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 Amen.